Welcome to the 2021 United Wiffle Ball National Championship semifinals. In this game, we have the Juggernauts versus the Whippets. Man, both these teams got here in different ways. The Whippets beat the Black Dog Country Club in the quarterfinal round, 5-1, to one, I believe it was. The Juggernauts came back to beat Whiff Inc. 2-1. to one. They hit a game-tying home run in the sixth and a walk-off home run in the eighth. This was the eighth in the game. So the Juggernauts will be playing the Whippets. The Whippets are running on fumes, but they're playing awesome. They're hitting the ball, timely hits. Uh, they're pitching well. This team has back-to-back -back Final Four appearances in United Wiffle, which is absolutely remarkable. I think they're the only team with back-to-back -back Final Four, right? Whippets? This year? This Last year. year and this year? Yes. Yeah. yeah, confirmed from Danny Lanigan behind me. The Whippets are the only team that uh, they're making the Final Four back-to-back -back years. So pretty incredible. And the Juggernauts were down to their last out in the previous game, and Stant launched a home run to tie it up in the bottom of the sixth, and then he hit the game-winning home run in the first pitch in the bottom of the eighth off of Connor. Uh, the sixth inning was off Whitener, eighth inning was off Connor. So we're heading to the final four, batting for the Juggernauts. Well, we'll get the lineups here. Whippets, you have Randy, Dalby, Pete Tayton, Pete Mockaby. Is that how you pronounce his last name? Yeah. I got it right. Wait, what is it? Well, it's just Mock for short. Okay, Mock. And then Randy... And then um, Nick Martinez, too. And for the juggernauts, you have Stan, who always leans off, leads off, Tim, Ryan, and Sarno. And the other field, we have uh, the Lemonheads versus the Meats. Hey guys, we're trying to do it now. So it's pretty, pretty cool that we have uh, three MAW teams, Mid-Atlantic Wiffle Ball teams left in this. Juggernauts, Lemonheads, and the Meats. The Meats beat C4 in uh, their game, and the Lemonheads beat Ridley, if I remember. That was hours ago now at this point. Does that sound correct? Yeah, I think that's correct. Um, so, some, I guess, four of the top teams that people expected to be in this final round are out, including the last year's champions, the usual suspects, C4, the Phenoms, and Black Dog Country Club. Four very ta uh, talented teams are no longer in the tournament. Um, so, we're down to the Juggernauts versus Whippets and Meats versus Lemonheads. Ryan's warming up. Looks like he's going to continue pitching. And we'll be back for a live game action in about a minute. And here we go. It's the Juggernauts versus the Whippets. Randy leading off for the Whippets. These are five inning games. And if it goes to extra, what's the extra inning rules for semifinals? I think uh, five clean and then it goes to bases loaded. Does that sound correct? That sounds good. <laughs> Hopefully we don't get there. But Ryan pitched the, um, the quarterfinal game. He pitched eight innings against Whiff Inc. The Whippets, I think if the Whippets are going to make it through, they're going to have to hit. And they have been hitting well all tournaments. So... Tim Cook is joining me now. We had a all different people. That, that game, that last game lasted so long. I had Tim in the booth. I had Paul in the booth. I had Danny Lanigan. I had Ethan. 
it was a ridiculous amount of people uh, joining me. But right now, I have Tim Cook. And Tim, talk to us about the Whippets, how well they've been hitting all tournament. Oh, I mean, the Whippets have, their bats have been on fire all day. They are, they're just a really good hitting team. There's, I don't know, there's, they, 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 show, they show it off on the field. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's where it matters. And I think they thrive on being underdogs or thinking people think they overachieve. People need to throw those two words in the garbage. This team has not overachieved. There's no way you're overachieving, We're making two straight Final Four against talented teams around the whole country like this, as Randy goes down looking there. Like, you're not overachieving when you accomplish that. This team is very, very good. One out, and here is Pete Tayton in the box. One out. Nobody on? Nobody on. High pitch. So let's see what Ryan has left in the tank. Ryan pitched eight high-stress innings against Wimp Inc. And it seemed like he, all of a sudden, the middle innings, he seemed like he, you know, struggled a little bit. But the beginning and the end, Ryan was on his game. Pop-up foul. And as we saw last game, the Juggernauts are an elite fielding team, too. They made a couple of good defensive plays. Pete Tayton in the box. Whippets are a fun team to watch. I was watching them. We were covering the uh, Jugs and Whiff Inc. game previously. Oh, uh, off-speed pitch. And watching the Whippets versus Black Dog. And every time I turned around, the Whippets were just launching hit after hit after hit against Black Dog Country Club. So uh, they, they're going to want to continue that momentum here. And once again, I'm Nick Schaefer. Uh, we'll be joined by Paul Cook shortly. Ground ball to short, Stant. Fields it clean. Let's see if he can complete the play. And he throws a strike home for a ground out. Nice defensive play. And as I said before, they've been fielding the ball very well. And I'm very honored to be calling the, the second year of the UWIF National Championship. This is a unbelievable tournament. It started with an incredible home run derby. So check out the YouTube page if you want to relive the monster shots by Jordan Robles and Tim McGelrath and Vin Lee, too. Uh, Jordan and Tim both had over 30 home runs, with Jordan edging him out to win his second straight home run derby. And then yesterday's competition was, was remarkable, and today has been exceptional. Outside pitch by Tim. Pete Maccabee is in the box. Maccabee's a lefty. If you want to catch the action of the other, oh, nice off-speed pitch hits the zone, buckles Maccabee's knee. The other game between the Lemonheads and Meats started a little earlier. That game is being, uh, I believe, live broadcast on Facebook, too. So we have both games being broadcasted right now. Nice pitch by Tim on the outer part of the zone. Uh, Ryan's trying to have a 1-2-3 inning, which every pitch that he can save would be good. Ground ball down third baseline, stays foul. And it's sunny out, you know, which is, this is, this finals weather has been tremendous. It's been great, you know, ever since it reached around noon. Two strikes, two outs. Ryan's trying to have a 1-2-3 inning. Good take by Maccabee there. Tim's playing center field, Stant at short, and Sarno is playing second base. All four of these guys are good fielders. Paul Cook joining me now in the booth. So, Paul, we got a, we got a good game going. It's going to happen here. I think a lot of hitting, both these teams. Yeah, this should be a really good one. Um, you know, obviously the Whippets have done nothing with Strikes it all day long. Out. So you'd expect that to continue here. But, yeah, you know, we'll see. Like, sometimes you get late in the tournament, guys, teams' tendencies from early in the tournament, you know, te uh, will, you know, sometimes change. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to try to find out if there's a score in the other game. So, yeah, it'll be Pete Tatum on the mound for the Whippets. Uh, Randy Dalby's gone most of the way. Um, it looks like Pete will probably start this game. They're both warming up here. Pete's got a good arm. He's a good pitcher. He pitched for the Whippets on Sunday during their run last year. So, you know, he's, he's, 
he's no stranger to that. And I think just, you know, obviously, you know, Randy's just he's three games in a row, basically all day. I think getting a little bit of a fresher arm is a big thing. Yeah. Um, Have you seen him pitch before, uh, Paul? Yeah, yeah. I was just saying, he, he, he pitched some of the uh, Sunday games last year for the Whippets. And, okay. You know, uh, it, it did a good job. You know, obviously, Randy's still the better pitcher, but, um, um, you know, but I, I think going with the fresh arm here is a smart, you know, smart, smart thing to do. Um, and then, you know, and then just mix and match in the finals if you make it there and try to figure out what to do. But I, I think going with your fresher pitcher, I think that's always the better option. Unless there's a huge discrepancy, and, you know, and here I think Pete's a good enough pitcher that. And as you say that, I just saw Dalby take a couple warm ups, but I think they are going to go with Pete, though. You yeah, know, they, they've, been, they've been going back and forth during warm ups. Here's so my see. inside scoop, Paul. I was at the concession stand getting some pretzels and. I saw Pete there, and he told me he was pitching, and he was gonna he was gonna empty the tank and see what he had left. So these guys are warriors. Uh, I mean, and there's Randy throwing a couple of warm ups too. I think they might try to even just see as many outs as possible. What's kind of crazy about this team is they're supposed to have Ryan Kaufman, who you know, pure stuff wise is probably you know is probably their best pitcher, but uh, unfortunately Ryan couldn't make it late. Um, uh, it was it was a late scratch, and they end up only two pitchers. Two veteran older pitchers, but you know they, they've they've managed to make it through uh, you know this whole tournament that with just two arms. Um, give an update of the other semifinals. It's three nothing meets here in the bottom of the first inning against the Lemonhead. So the meets in a very good position with uh, Kyle on the mound. Um, Lemons, you know, may just be running low on pitching. They brought Styles back after he hadn't pitched in a few hours, um, and he was wild early. wasn't wasn't quite locked in. Yeah, that's a that's a if they jump out in the first inning, get three runs. That's absolutely amazing. So very good start uh, to the tournament. I mean, to the semifinals for the meets. Three nothing lead. You know, if you're the Lemonheads, you need to you know answer back with a run or two yeah. just to get show me you're in this game. So that's in the bottom of the first. This game is also in the bottom of the first. And the Juggernauts batting lineup, Paul is no surprise. <laughs> it's it's Stant leading off, followed by Tim Ryan and then Sarno. Yeah, and, that, and, and that's kind of that's one of the, you know the nice advantages of being a full season team is like decisions like that are already made. You already know what it is. You already have a set lineup. There's no going into the tournament saying, okay, well maybe it'll be this, maybe it'll be that, maybe we'll change during the tournament. You know what your lineup is. You know what your four guys are. You know what all their tendencies are. Uh, you know that can be big. Now, obviously, these guys these guys know each other really well too. Besides for Nick, um, who was a, a, a late replacement in part because. Of, Ryan couldn't make this tournament. Yeah. Uh, these three guys have all these three guys played together last year. They played together on various teams. They had a uh, they were the uh, uh, gr Great West Gunslingers in 2012. Was uh, Dalby Mockaby. Um, I don't think Tatum. I can't remember if Tatum was on that team or not. But these guys have a lot of history together. Paul, so we talked a little bit about this last game. As one of the um, managers of M MAW Mid Atlantic Wiffle, you know, how does it feel to see three? MAW teams in the semifinals. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's cool. Like, you know, we, we talk about, I guess with teams, you know, that, 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 that can be said that those are three MAW teams. I mean, talking about players or whatever, you know, I don't, I don't think in wiffle ball players belong to an organization. They, you know, they are who they are. And, you know, uh, the good thing would be if, 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 if all players just, you know, played wherever, you know, there was good competition. But, yeah, I think it's really cool for this area and for, uh, you know, the Northeast sort of thing. Both the Northeast and just um, the younger Northeast talent that, that this tournament has worked out the way that it, it has, for whatever reason. I mean, obviously C4, you know, three-time champions. Um, there's been plenty of Northeast champions, but like yeah. I, I feel like at the national championship tournament over the years, uh, even though Northeast is kind of the hotbed of wiffle ball, that's kind of got you know that's been downplayed in the results. That's just that's just how stuff has played out. Hasn't been the case this year. We've got three Northeast teams in this all different teams that haven't been in it this late. We're going to see a first-time champion one way or another. We're going to see, um, if it's not if it's not the um, um, the Whippets, we're going to see, a, a you know, a relatively young, you know, champion. You know, yeah. the juggernauts kind of being the old guys, or Pete Slater maybe on the Lemonheads being the old guys, or, you know, or, you know Jimmy or Bush, and they're, and they're just nearing 30. Yeah. So, you know, so, so that's cool. I think there is, like, sort of a, I don't want to say it's a new era or anything like that. You don't want to overstate it, but sort of a um, – um, a, a nice – I nice see these fresh faces this late. Absolutely. And as, as we continue to see Randy warming up too, along with Pete, so it's interesting. Maybe they might just mix and match or one of them – they're not sure who's going to start. Good movement by Pete. Maybe his arm is getting loose. Somehow Randy's able to still reach uh, home plate. He 
the shadows really creeping in here. Uh, you can you can really see it on the broadcast uh, on this field, but that shouldn't at least right now it shouldn't make a difference. But there, it's getting awfully close to the pitching grabber. Yeah. At that point, you know, if it gets over that, if it gets over the full carpet. You know, Randy's already tall to begin with. His arm's going to be coming out of those shadows. It looks like Randy's going to take the mound, Paul. Uh, well, not 100% sure, but it looks like it. Yeah, Pete wasn't throwing many strikes there in warm up, so I think that may have influenced their decision. Yeah, you might see you might see a relief pitch, relief pitcher too, or whatnot. I mean, whippets. We know they're going to have to win by you know scoring some runs with their bats more than they're pitching this game. It seems like. Yeah, that's and that's how that's how they've done it all tournament. That, that's the, the funny thing, you know. We're uh, talking about you know Randy here, and he obviously he has been a, a big factor in the Whippets' run today. But it, it's really been their offense. He let up ten runs earlier this morning against Way Too Beautiful, and they won that game. That game was wild. Every yeah. time he turned around, you heard somebody screaming. There was home runs, people crashing in the fences. What a great great game that was. So man, I, I think I think all the Whippets really want is yeah, someone that can throw it over, someone that can keep them in the game. Uh, they, they don't. You know, they don't need to shut out. They don't. You know, even five or six runs isn't insurmountable for them. No, not at all. All right, let's get this game on the road here. It's a long warm-up session for bottom of the first. Once again, uh, Juggernaut's batting lineup. You got Stant, Tim. Ryan and Sarno, that's their usual four, the usual lineup. That's been the core of their team the last few years. And I think it, it, you know, we're projecting ahead, but it'll be absolutely remarkable, Paul. I know we're, we're projecting if the Juggernauts were able to win this game in the finals to win within September and October to win MAW championship and then win the UWF championship. I mean, I think you could say that's one of the – would be one of the – Great accomplishments in modern day Wiffle Bowl. Yeah, yeah, we, we could definitely talk about that you know, a little Later more. on, if, we don't want to jinx so. <laughs> if, if it starts to become more of a reality, but yeah, yeah. It, it, it would be, it, it would rank up there among team accomplishments all Well, time. no matter what, honestly, even if they lose this game, it's still incredible to, to within September winning the MAW championship and then in this one making the Final Four. Wait, wow. That's, that's, yep. that's awesome. They'll have to buy new jackets if they were to win this, this game. Dan takes a ball inside. So Randy is pitching. We weren't sure who was going to take an amount between Randy and Pete. Stan had the game tying home run in the, in the quarterfinals and the, with one out to go in the bottom of the sixth against Whitener, launched it into right center field bleachers and had the game winning home run in the bottom of the eighth against Connor Young to send his team into the semifinals. Ground ball to third. Let's see if he completes the play. Throws him out. Nice defense there by the Whippets. We got one out. We're seeing some sharp defense already. Uh, both teams have fielded a ball cleanly through a ball uh, for a strike in the backstop um, in the first inning so far. Tim coming to the plate for the Juggernauts. Let's see if Tim could get his back going in this game. Randy hits the uh, corner or outside corner on that pitch. Randy's a, a lanky pitcher who uses his legs too. It's not you know to generate you know some of his power, and he's able to have a long stride to get closer to the mound. And he also hides the ball really well as a pitcher. Hits the inner corner there too. He really hides the ball well. Strikes out. Tim looking, we got two outs. I mean, we might be looking at one of the all-time greatest uh, performances here going on here to, for the Whippets uh, in the tournament. Take away ERA, just look at wins here. I, I think Wiffle Ball is a little bit anti-baseball. Wins are more important than ERA and Whip because um, it depends on your fatigue, how many innings you're pitching. And Randy's just winning games, winning games different with different ways. I don't think you're going to find anything more impressive than that. I mean... It might look in the shiz. They're hitting him down the middle of the plate. Well, it's because I think he's hiding the ball very well. He's mixing up his pitches very well, too. So we got two outs, no, nobody on, and Ryan's at the plate. 
also, yeah, I mean, don't discount it. Wiffle ball, you know, having length like Randy has, you know, it's just it's just so huge because you, you're already very, very close to the batter, and he's releasing that, you know, probably two to two feet closer than, you know, a pitcher of normal height is. I mean, Ryan, I think, look back, like, how did I hit the strike zone yeah. there? Outside, upper corner, drop, and it was a very late drop, too. He's mixing up his pitches. I mean, what's – I hope he keeps uh, he has the energy to keep going, but this first thing is very impressive. We're, I mean, I was not expecting him to have much in the tank here. But sometimes when your team makes it far, you're you're operating a pure adrenaline. And he he, he Hits was Ryan in the leg there. He was ready for this when um when um Maccabee sent in his uh his, his you know his last minute you know roster changes with um, Kaufman not coming. He said he said Randy's ready to go thirty innings yeah. and he's he's pretty much come close to that. So that's absolutely amazing. Oh line drive right field is going to be a double. It is going to be a double. Ryan takes it to right field a two strike double too. Two out. A two out double for uh, the Juggernauts. They are. Sarno coming to the plate. Remember, a clean single scores and runs. Sarno coming to the plate. He's looking to get going, too, with his bat. Takes one down the middle from Randy. Strike one. This is a big early at bat here. Yeah, especially with the runner on second, it's huge. Sidearm drop. I love seeing that. Hits the upper part of the strike zone. 0-2 count. So now if you're Randy, maybe you throw either a high riser, because Sarno sometimes will chase pitches, or a low drop that's, like, way below the zone. Try to get him to chase. A fly, pop up the right field. Nice catch. I actually thought it was going to fall in. Nice catch to end the inning. Yeah. So at the end of one, it is 0-0. Zero, zero. It was interesting. He's, I mean, maybe that's a sign of the fatigue too. That he went right over to him there. He didn't have to. He was ahead in the count. Uh, he could have thrown something, you know, um, uh, outside of the zone. But he went, he went right after Red there. Red just got on through that by a little bit. Yeah, I thought that was going to fall in for a second, and he was able to re recover and uh, stay with the ball. So we're at the top of the second. Coming up for the Whippets, you got Nick Martinez. Then the top of the order, Randy. And Pete Tayton. Ryan like routinely starts his warm ups from second base. It's fun to watch. <laughs> Heading to the top of the second. Um, five inning games, right, guys? Yeah, five inning games, and they're just, just going to play out here. Okay. Oh, there's no extra innings. Yeah. So um, if it goes to extra innings, whoever scores, there's no adding bases loaded or anything like that. Play it out. Nick Martinez leading off here for the Whippets. You have, you have any scouting report on Martinez? Yeah, he's a good hitter, a good veteran hitter. He, he – um, he came up, um, I, I believe he came up, um, definitely his first sort of big exposure was playing in Palisades um, in the mid-2010s. Then he relocated to Texas, um, where he's, you know, he's, he's played a, a he hasn't really played in any league sort of consistently since he's been down there. But, you know, we'll play in some of uh, the Cedar Park tournaments and we'll, we'll okay. play elsewhere. And it's been, and when the uh, national championship was in Texas, he was regular. Um, participant there, and then he's uh, uh, captain the Bronx Royals last year at the uh, both in 2019 and 2020 at the national championship tournament. Yeah, he's a, he's a good hitter. Um, is that is, is also a very good fielder, very sure handed, can make the throw with um, out much issue. But yeah, he's, he's a not necessarily an average hitter, but yeah. he'll big line drive hits every now and then, big power potential. That's awesome. Ground ball, third base, just foul. Stanton was right on that. I'm not, I'm not sure if he would have reached it, but it would have been close. 
I mentioned it. Both these teams seem like, I mean, we know the Juggernauts are good fielding teams. So do Whippets. They both seem like they're very good fielding teams. Yeah, no, they are. And, and you, um, I think you have to be at this stage of the tournament. Uh, I guess you can, you know, I guess teams could always just pound their way there. You know, with a lot of power hitting, just a lot of shutdown pitching. But, you know, there's going to be times that come up where you, that defense is going to play a factor, and it's hard to get through if you're playing shoddy Ground ball. Ryan was able to get to it. It was always off his fist almost. Let's see. Is it going to? It is a ground out. Nice way to get off the mound by Ryan quickly. So Martinez grounds out to the mound. We got one out. Coming up. Top, back to the top of the order, Randy. Randy's up in his last at bat. He struck out looking. I was saying before, uh, like um, every time I turned around, wa like watching the Whippets Black Dog Country Club game at the corner of my eye, the Whippets were just smacking the ball all over the field against Black Dog. It was. Uh, there's another ground ball. Nice okay, diving play. Fixed. Sarno, can he complete? Oh, unable to complete the throw. So he made the hard play. <laughs> so Randy with an infield single. But the Whippets put the ball in play. They get hits. This, you know, I feel like it's, there's not a ton of strikeouts with this team. There's a lot of action going on when they're yeah, batting. Yeah, they, 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 they don't strike out like at all. Like that's that's their big, you know, that's that's been the difference maker for them these last two years. Oh, going with two um, two outfielders early. They want to prevent a run, so man up first, one out. Last game we saw the Juggernauts go with three outfielders. Fly ball is gonna is. Gonna drop, so it's a clean single, guys. Right, first and third. Yep, that, that's why you do it. If if Fred's not out there, now that looked like that was slowing down on the clay warning track. But you know, if he's not out there, that may that may hit the wall. The only thing I would second guess here is I want to ask your opinion. Like, was he playing too deep? I think you play two outfielders, but you don't play two guys on the wall. You know, that's what I was. Well, I, I mean, I, I think they. I, I think you can argue that. I think they do it specifically for that. Like, you, you, okay. you, you'll hear him yell, you know, protect against doubles. So if you're protecting against doubles, you're, the, you're willing the to give the single. Well, it, not just willing to give the single. Yeah, like you literally are just playing against the wall to keep it off the wall. Um, yeah, it was less about playing an outfield defense and more about playing a protect double. And defense. here's the exact opposite. They're talking about maybe going with. Uh, Let's see. All three in the infield. They're talking about it. Yep, they're going with th everybody's in the infield. What a, what a difference. I mean, this team's all about strategy. And just as a reminder for viewers, your infielder needs to have his foot on the line, at least one foot to be counted as an infielder for the play. I think this is, I think this is a, a smart move, especially with, yes. with Maccabee up, because he hits a lot of ground balls, um, you know, a lot of sort of soft line drives. Yeah, I, I, and also I think the you know the juggernauts, you know understand that you want to try to prevent one run. You're, if, you know rather than giving up. If, if it's a fly ball, most likely it was going to land in anyway. In a lot of circumstances, one ball, one strike, to the lefty. That's right. Yeah. Did he did he go around there? It's hard to tell sometimes up here if a guy checks swings or not because we have a dead straight on view. I may be wrong. Won't be the first time. Here's the, the pitch to Maccabee. Outer corner, good spot by Ryan. And I think. I was right. No, you first. weren't. Yeah. Oh, one strike count. Yeah, you were right. All right, so we got two outs. Big out there. He, really big out. First and third. Nick come, Mick Martinez coming up, and as Paul mentioned before, Martinez has a history of being a very good hitter. So let's see what the juggernauts are doing. Are they going to all infield again? And, and you know, and, and Nick has obviously seen Ryan before, you know, from their shared shared past in Palisades. But uh, you know, Nick doesn't get a ton of at bats. And you know, Ryan's a guy. Even if you've seen him before, if you haven't seen him in a while, I think it would be difficult to repick back up. So the Whippets are almost like uh, anti analytics in a sense. Like put the ball in play, have action. With football, I think it's a smart move because it's different than baseball, obviously. And They've been doing it all all day. I mean, they do hit for power too, obviously, but you know, they 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 create, they make you earn your outs. Ryan, back to back pitches, Paul, high and inside, and Martinez chasing both of them so far. Oh and two. Yeah, I, I wonder. You know, Ryan usually is a you know a right at you type of guy. I wonder if you know he he knows from facing Nick in the past that he can get him to chase a little bit there. Why not do it a third time? That's the strategy. And if you're Nick, you know, you try to lay off it, or you kind of get your hands up a little bit quicker. Just missed the outside part of the strike zone. One ball, two strikes, two outs, first and third, and we are in the top of the second of a five-inning game. 
ended up being a beautiful, absolutely beautiful weather here for the last uh, couple rounds of the tournament. Yeah, picture perfect right now. By the time we get ooh, off the uh, off the hands, it said. Uh, by the time we get to the finals, we'll probably this whole field will probably be covered in shadows. Um, you know, as uh, the sun sets, we got nice high sun right now. It's good, like we, we talked about, about a little earlier. Make it difficult for the hitters here. The the shadows are now over the rubber, about halfway down the carpet. So the the ball is going to be coming out of the shadows. I don't know if that's going to make a huge difference or not. Yeah. It could be. I mean, it's hard to tell up here, but I would imagine it makes – it's not perfect, put it that way, for the yeah. shadows. You prefer not to have them outside. Ryan's really trying to go – He went after going inside the first two pitches, he's trying to go outside the last two pitches. We don't have an update in the other game. It was it was 3 nothing, uh meets before. I'm not sure what the score is right now. Oh, Ryan's able to escape the jam. After having a first and third one-out situation, he's able to get out of the inning. So we're heading to the bottom of the second. It's still 0-0. Zero, zero. So we're heading to the bottom of the second here, coming up for the Juggernauts. Stant, Tim, and Ryan, and Sarnoff, Emma gets on. So that was a good escape by Ryan pitching there. Um, the Whippets had first and third, one out, and Ryan was able to strike out uh, Maccabee and Martinez to end the inning. So Stant leading off here. And as you mentioned numerous times, Stant did a lot of damage in the quarterfinals, had the game-tying home run against uh, Whitener, hit the game-winning home run against Connor. So two dramatic home runs, two bullets to right field and right center. Um, Stan is a very well, there's a pop up to left field. Nice play, nice catch. So again, the Whippets are really showing their strong defense here, making all the plays, whether it's a pop up, whether it's a ground ball, fly ball. They don't, they don't give the team any extra outs. You know, I mean, they're, they're, they're fundamentally sound. These guys have been playing forever, um, you know. There's not a situation they haven't seen. There's not a ground ball up the middle. Base hit there by uh, Tim. Yeah, it, it, it definitely looks like the juggernauts are gonna uh, gonna be able to put the bat on the ball this game. You know, put a lot of pressure on Randy. It's it's his job. Just to, it's not even his job to keep it like we said a shutout. It's just his job to keep it close. Keep it two, three runs. Yeah, I think it's a great attitude to have. Yeah, G give his team a chance. That's what you're hoping. That's all you get yeah, hope for. That, that's all he has to do. So in the meets game, Paul, update on that. I don't have the inning, but it's still three nothing meets right now against the Lemonheads. They scored three in the first inning, I believe. So they must be in the third, maybe the fourth inning over there. I can't, you know, I'm not 100 percent sure. Randy, I love that sidearm drop he throws. It's uh, he used to throw it a long time ago, and he still throws it. So Ryan's up here with man on first and one out. The inning started with a pop-up by Stan and then a, uh, a single by Tim up the middle. Sidearm drop in. Oh, Ryan deposited it to right field. A line drive shot. I thought it was going to be off the wall. It stayed just high enough, and it was a line drive home run. Two-run home run by Ryan to give the Juggernauts a 2-0 lead. 
Wow, what a what a shot by Ryan there, Paul. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was just about to say, like Ryan got real hot late in the season. His uh, his offense kind of struggled most of the year, but he really seemed to come around late, and that that's kind of what he was doing late in the year is just going opposite field with it, going with the pitch. And when, when he makes contact, like when he barrels up on the ball like that, it goes a long way. And I, I think he, I think for mo- a lot of the season, maybe he got a little you know out of sorts, was trying to do too much. There's a ground ball foul, third base, yeah. The juggernauts put a lot of pressure on themselves, all four of these guys. They, they, they want to win every single thing that they're at, and I think that may have played a role. And I think as they kind of got rolling as the year went along, Ryan became more relaxed, and uh, I think that's paid dividends. Sarno at the plate here. So you want a huge change of momentum. I mean, Paul, the previous inning, the Whippets had first and third, one out, and did not score. And now the juggernauts take a 2 nothing lead. So the, between those two, you know, Innings there, it totally changed everything. It's deflating, I would say, for the Whippets there. They could have been in the lead. Instead, they're down 2 nothing. Yeah, and, and, and I, I think the thing for the Whippets is since they all, all are veteran guys, um, I think they sort of understood the situation they were in. I don't think this is unexpected that they find themselves. I don't think, I don't think they think it's unexpected that they're down this early in the game. Um, you know, again, I think it's just for them, it's keeping it to two runs. Let's get out of this. Let's try to get a few hits. Let's try to get a run next inning. Start chipping away. Sarno at the plate here. Oh, you want to wait, um, Paul, on that home run, too. I complimented Dalby on the, you know, sidearm side drop. drop, and then he threw it again, but the second one hung up more in the zone, and Ryan, instead of trying to pull, on, pull it off the ball, just went with the pitch and hit a line drive to right field. Up the middle, single for Sarno, and you called it, too. They're up here. They see the ball well. I mean, keep in mind, Dalby is – this is not a knock-on. Pitching on fumes. I mean, he's still pitching well. The ball is moving all over the place. He's still effective. But at this late in the stage, it's it's hard to get that little extra bite on your drop pitch, a little extra velocity, because you, you just can't generate that when you have so many innings under your arm in two days, especially pitching yesterday and today. You know, sooner or later, your arm is going to be very fatigued. Um, but it's, he's still pitching well. But against an elite hitting team like the Juggernauts, it's hard to hold him down. Yeah, and, and I, I think the Whippets realized that that's an issue uh, after last year, and that's why they that's why they added Ryan Kaufman. You know, unfortunately, he couldn't make it. But you know, that was the whole idea. Like Randy got him this far. Randy can always get him this far, but he's going to hit a wall right around the semifinals. If they would have had Ryan, they would have had you know another arm to go to down the stretch. And stance up. So this is a big at bat too. You don't want to give another two run home run and be down four nothing. So do your best to try to hold him here. And the Juggernauts have been hitting the ball hard, too, Paul. Their single by Sarno was a hard hit up the middle. Ryan's single was, was hard. Yeah, the, the Juggernauts are feeling it now. They're, they're a team that turns it on, you know, late in t- tournaments when they, you know, when they really feel like they're getting close. And you can kind of see it now. They're getting into that groove. Um, you know, like a, a, a line of almost like a, like a band. You kind of feed off of one another, you know, what each other's doing, and you kind of learn each other's tendencies. And oh, I, good pitch there. And I think the juggernauts exemplify that, you know, more so than uh, a lot of the teams, a lot of the regular teams you and I get to watch, Nick, where they, they really feed off each other. They really sort of get into a rhythm, like where their roster really is, their lineup really is just sort of, you know, ebb and flow, give and take. Yeah. Pop up there. Tim's at the plate here. And last at bat, Tim has Cade, and he's singled. I feel like the um, – Stant did all the damage for this team last game, and now the other hitters are starting to pick it up. Tim, Ryan, of course, and Sarno. Let's see if uh, Randy can hold him here, give his defense a chance. He went with a riser, just missed the outside corner. Tim's looking to add to this lead. I'm watching him here. He's choking up on the bat, too. You don't see that that often. Just missed the inner part of the plate there. Sidearm drop by Randy. It is 2 nothing Juggernauts. And the other game right now, I believe, is 3 nothing Meats. Randy just missed outside. So he's gone riser, sidearm drop, back to riser so far against Tim. It's base hit by the meets in the other field. It looks like it's a double. Sidearm dropped. Tim swings at it. It's a 
Let's see if they could turn two. They got the first one. Could Randy complete the double play? And he does. Well turned. That ball had a lot of spin on yeah. it. Uh, a lot of English, you like to say. And then he was able to flip it to Randy. And Randy, you know, calmly uh, threw the ball home to complete the double play. So huge play defense there by um, the Whippets to hold the Juggernauts to two runs. So we're heading to the third inning. It is two nothing Juggernauts. So, Paul, that, although the Whippets are going to be disappointed to go down 2-0, that was a big double play to get out of that inning, so they prevented the Juggernauts from adding to that lead. And I see Sarno uh, warm up. Looks like they're going to make a pitching change. And so remember, Sarno's only pitched, I think, two innings against MLW. Has he pitched more than that? Yeah, no, that, that, that was it. Tim pitched all their innings yesterday. So Sarno doesn't have a lot on his arm. I mean, this is a good chance. This is a good opportunity to get him in here. Uh, worst comes to worst, he just has nothing. And you got to take him out after a few base runners or after a run. At least Ryan hasn't been out for a while at that point. Yeah. The, the Ryan's walking to the mound. I'm not necessarily sure. This might not definitely be no, a pitching no, it, change. It looks like it probably is. But you can't tell if Ryan. He's see. pounding his leg. Maybe it's yeah. a leg cramp, too. You never know. Legs do go on pitchers, too. It's not just your arm. If you haven't pitched before, you need your legs to drive off the rubber here and generate some power. And obviously warm-ups are just warm-ups. But Saros looked really, really good here. He's uh, a lot better stuff than the other times we've seen him war warm up today. I mean, what a weapon for the Juggernauts to, at this stage of the game, yeah. able to go to a Sarno, um, you know, to pitch here in a big spot. Well, look, I mean, they, they manage their roster really well um, through this tournament to be able to do that. Obviously, they had the Route 2 start. They earned the Route 2 uh, starting position. You know, which allowed him a, a, a little bit of flexibility to you know to pitch Tim, but you know Tim still came out and was you know firing and made easy work of their three opponents, um, you know, including a, a, a really good uh, Will Waves team. And then you know, so they got through that Saturday with two pitchers and it, uh, um, fresh. Owen only needs to play four games. They got through most of the MAW season just using two pitchers to pitch six games. So they're they're used to this and they're ready for Absolutely. this. Absolutely. I was just thinking too, Paul, another this is minor, but I think it does help a team. This is the third straight game the Juggernauts have played in this field one. So uh, I think it helps with just consistency, getting used to the, the field, the differences of the field, the, 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 the backdrop for the hitter's eye. You know, and uh, if they win this game, I think most likely will stay here. We're not sure yet, but, you know, I think that's helped them a little bit. Every little thing matters that helps your team. Sonor's still warming up, so he's definitely coming in. Um, what a pitching performance by Ryan. He pitched eight innings against Whiff Inc. to get the win in extra innings, and he's pitched the first two innings here. So in ten innings, in uh, quarterfinals and semis, Paul, Ryan gave up one run in ten innings. And I don't think Ryan's necessarily done uh, you yeah. know, f f for the day. I think I, I really do think knowing sort of how Red thinks about stuff, how the juggernauts think about stuff, that part of this is okay. Let's let's get right into this game rather than putting him in for the first time in the finals. Give Ryan a little bit of rest, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if we don't see Ryan starting the finals yeah. or at least pitching, you know, a couple innings. Yeah, and this, this is, remember this game is only a two nothing game right yeah. now. Or as we're saying, Whippets can hit, but I think they need to kind of 
change the momentum of this game. So a little offense this inning, you know, a run or two would help them. Um, you know, you, it could be a little draining when, like we mentioned in the top of the second, do a at first and third with one out, didn't score, and then in the bottom of the second gave a two-run homer. So the game shifted from thinking you're going to have the lead to now you're down by multiple runs. So we're about to get back at it. Uh, Sarno seems ready to go. As you see, the juggernauts are always warming up their fielders too, which is a smart thing to do because, you know, they're a very, very solid fielding team, all aspects of the game. Um, the batting order here for the Whippets, you got Randy leading off the third inning, followed by Pete Tayton, then Maccabi, and then if anybody gets on, Martinez. Tip, Sarno typically fe features a lot of heat, you know, a, a sidearm drop, a screwball, screw drop, you know, a riser sometimes, a slider, but the key thing, he does throw hard. And he's really come a long way as a pitcher, Nick, is, you know, even just in the few years that we've known him, uh, he's become a lot more of a pitcher, and he's also added velocity, which, you know, Gigi goes the other way, but, uh, you know, he's, he's become just a really, really great all-around pitcher, and this is... Obviously, you know, the biggest uh, spot he's ever pitched in. Two balls, one strike. We say this all the time, but the leadoff hitter is very important. You know, get out if you're a pitcher or to get on base if you're the hitter. And there's a base hit by the Lemonheads in the other field. It looks like it was a, might be a double. It's hard to tell. So on our sidearm there, a little while to begin the game here. He, he does have sometimes, you know, more so when he was younger, but still does a little, a little some streaks of wildness. Yeah, no, I mean, he'll, he'll, he'll definitely lose, uh, lose his arm slot a bit. When he tries to throw clean ball, he has real trouble. Ground ball to Stant, fields it cleanly. We got one out. Stan fired that ball <laughs> at the uh, whole point. He didn't take any chances. Coming up for the Whippets is Pete Tayton. Yeah, but they don't allow Stan to pitch anymore, so anytime he touches the ball and gets a chance to throw it, he fires it to try to show off that arm. He, uh, Sarno jammed uh, Dalby in that. Nice cut by Pete, fouls it straight back. Randy was unable to generate any power uh, because he had jammed on that and he hit a ground ball uh, to Stan on that play. Sidearm uh, hard riser by Stan, uh, by Red that exploded up in the strike zone. 0 and 2. We got uh, Tim playing in center field and Ryan playing third base. Stant at first base side. Sidearm drop by Sarno just misses the strike zone. Good take there by Pete. Yeah, more more or less. So as you might notice there, we were just commenting on it. Uh, a lot of different pitches. Oh, nice sidearm riser, a tail back at the bottom left corner for two outs. But Stan does talk to Sarno. Oftentimes when Sarno is walking back to the mound, um, my guess is giving him input on the next pitch or, or an idea. We got two outs and Maccabee coming up. Maccabee has struck out uh, both times he batted so far. Good hold there by Maccabi. Both Stan and Ryan confirmed the hold there, doing the same side. I don't know how Stan sees it from the first base side, but we'll go with uh, it. Stan will give his opinion on, on, <laughs> yeah, on any check swing, ground ball, or anything. It doesn't matter if he saw it or didn't see it. Sonar mixing it up there, Paul. Sidearm drop. Got Maccabi chasing there. One ball, one strike. Yeah, he's, he's attacking these uh, whippets hitters really well. I don't know if you know, we credit that to Stan or, you know, or Red. But uh, he's doing a real nice job mixing things up. I think it's, you know, experience a little bit too. Rather than just consistently trying to overpower people, you know, you mix it up. So we got a final in our first semifinals, it looks like. The uh, Meats. The Meats will advance to the championship game. They'll await the winner of this game.
10 nothing lead. So, yeah, uh, Lemonheads ran it. Lemonheads also kind of like Whippets, though they had a little more length with their guys. Uh, only had two pitchers. Looks like they hit a wall here, uh, ran out of uh, bullets. So the Meats advanced on a Mercy Rule 10 run win. And you see that once in a while, Paul, in huge tournaments. Like sometimes you just run out of like options, you know, or, you know, that's what it sounds like the Lemonheads maybe did. Um, and the, the Meats are an elite hitting team, but sometimes you do run out of options and you could have a a score that doesn't reflect the talent of your team sometimes. Oh, you know, absolutely. And, and that's a cool thing. High heat by Sarno there. Yeah, like one, two, three innings. Well, I stopped working off the plate. But that's a cool thing about a tournament like this is that, you know, you, you can be a team like the Lemonheads that, you know, that play together all the time, that, you know, just have two pitchers, and they can come here and they can compete and make it all the way to the semifinals and still have enough bullets to even get into the semifinals and have a chance of winning. And, yeah, you, you may hit a wall, and then um, when you hit a wall, it may not be a pretty end result. But, you know, hats off to the Lemonheads. They played a heck of a tournament. I think a bunch of people had them, um, a bunch of people that knew them, you know, from the Northeast, from uh, MAW or Golden Stick, um, you know, knew their talents, knew that they were a sleeper team, and they, they delivered on it. Mike Styles and Ray Blutick were great. All four guys hit. It was just, you know, it was a well-oiled machine all tournaments. Yeah, um, I think that's the key part. The last word you just said, hit. You know, that was – if we knew if they could hit, they could compete with anybody. So they were hitting very well today. And, and, and they all did. I mean, that, that yeah. was what was most surprising. Ray had a couple big home runs. Yeah. You know, and, and Ray's their lightest hitter. You know, Pete had some home runs. Um, Tim Beck delivered the big uh, game-winning single against Ridley Park. Um, Styles had a couple big home runs. Yeah, they, they all hit. They all gelled. Uh, and just a great run by the Lemonheads. I, I, hope they, I hope they run this team back because this is a fun team. This is a good yeah. team that can make a lot of noise in the future. I'll be back on the mound here. We're heading to the bottom of the third. Coming up for the Jugs, you got, let's see, you got Ryan leading off, Sarno and, and Stan. And remember, Ryan had the two-run homer in the previous inning, um, a right field shot that didn't get that much above the fence because it was hit so hard and didn't elevate um, to give his team a 2 nothing lead after Tim, his brother, got it, let off the inning with a single. Let's see if Dalby could have a shutdown inning for the Whippets, you know, to give his team, you know, keep him within striking distance. Ryan leading off here. The Meats will have a little rest now before they um, they play in the finals, and they might. I don't think they played a, a complete game over there. It's a ten-run rule game, so they, they they might be fresh for arms. They might be fresh for playing too. The Meats will be in the finals against the winner of this game, which is the Juggernauts versus the Whippets. Dalby going straight at Ryan and gets him for a strike. Might have surprised Ryan a little bit. Dalby's still gutting this out. Again, I mean, you say this a lot. What an incredible performance by the Whippets. What an incredible performance by Dalby. Tries to get him a chase. Good hold by Ryan. One ball, one strike. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Ryan. Outside, two balls, one strike. Tim Cook joining me now in the booth. Two balls, one strike to Ryan, who had a two-run homer uh, last inning. Three balls, one strike. So how excited are the meets, uh, Tim, uh, advancing to the finals? Yeah, I mean, this is what they've been... It's so what they've been working for. They've got an NWLA championship. If they can get a nice pitch by Dalby to make it a full count. If they can get a championship in this style. Um, they'll be the only team to to do that. Which is nuts. And then, meanwhile, like you're gonna have a first of something. Let's say the Juggernauts get through. You're gonna have the you know their MAW and trying to get this, and you'll have the meets with the other one championship and trying to get this. So somebody's getting multiple rings uh, in this tournament. The Whippets are still battling here, though. You know, I wouldn't put anything past them. This game feels like it's more than 2 nothing, but it is only 2 nothing. Nice pitch. Oh, off Randy's leg, and it's going to be a double. A leadoff double by Ryan. So Ryan has a home run and a double. His last two at-bats. Here's Sarno. 
And the Whippets are an elite defensive team, too. I was a, no way Dalby could have got that, but it was off his leg, and unfortunately, it carried to the wall. Nice pitch, outer corner to plate for strike one. Maccabi playing center field there. Ground ball, third base. I think... I think that was a clean single. So three nothing. We're waiting on word for that. Sarno hit a clean single, that scores Ryan from second base. Three nothing juggernauts. It was hard to tell whether he got a piece of that. So if he did get a piece of it, it was going to be first and third. But because he didn't touch it, he advances two bases. Three nothing juggernauts. And with the runner on first, Stan comes to plate, fouls it off straight back. Juggernaut's looking very comfortable and confident at the plate right now, Tim. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. They're, they're seeing everything. You know, when you play a full season and you get this amount of reps, nothing, nothing looks daunting. You know, baseball and wiffle ball is a game of failure. But when you get as many chances and opportunities as they do, it makes that failure feel a lot less. Ground ball back to Randy. Flips it to second. Let's see if they can complete the double play. Oh, just misses. They get one of them out. So it'll be a runner on there was a man on first with the um, the double play chance. It misses. It'll be a runner on second. Is that correct? Yeah. Man on second, two outs. No. No one out. One out. I'm sorry. Man on second, one out, and Tim coming to the plate. So that wasn't a miscue, but the Whippets have been almost flawless in, in, in the field. And they, they, they'll tell you, they probably felt like they should have got the double play there. That might have hit the knob of the bat against Tim there. Yeah, yeah, I think it probably did the way he reacted. Yeah, he just said it did. He's a, Tim, little, a little annoyed by that. Tim, Tim chokes up, so the knob is more exposed. Which isn't a negative. Ooh, I thought I was going to catch the upper part of the zone. Drop by Dolby there, but it's hung up in the air. His sharpness is disappearing a little bit. And I mentioned earlier, you know, that comes with fatigue. You know, velocity and sharpness uh, both tend to go. I don't know what his total count has been. Ground, oh, nice catch. What a shot. Is that, is that Slayton over there? Line drive shot that Slayton caught there. Nice play. It looked like it was off his chest, and he, then he corralled it with his hands. Yeah, that was a rocket. 105 off the bat. Two outs here, and Ryan coming to the plate. Ryan has homered and doubled his last two at bats, and he hits a fly ball foul down the right field line. Uh oh, looks Ooh, like he's coming yeah. up a little hobbling there. Oh, the man, the Whippets are really, really battling here. <laughs> a lot of aches and pains, Tim, going on with all teams, but the Whippets are feeling them now. When you go from a standstill as a fielder and you just take off and you explode towards the ball, sometimes it can lead to a cramp or a pulled hamstring or a quad. Nick, is there anything, you know, the pitcher's all completely in the shadows now. Mm -hmm. Hitter is still in the sun. Is there anything? It doesn't seem like the hitter, it's affecting the hitters on the juggernauts right now. They're getting good swings. So it says it's the shadows don't seem to be affecting them. Oh, nice pitch down and in. It looked like it was like screwball a little bit. It started tailing towards Ryan underneath his hands, but good take. So we got two outs, man on second, three nothing juggernauts at the moment. Ryan hard ground ball, another good play by Slayton. He gets up. Let's see if he completes it. Tim, two wonderful plays at defense there by yeah. Pete Slayton. Pete, Pete, Tayton, I'm sorry. And uh, the line drive shot before he caught off his chest, and that one he dove for it, got back up, was able to throw a strike to the backstop. So undoubtedly he saved the run. Two gold glove type plays to end the inning. However, the juggernauts do put across a run to give themselves a 3 nothing lead, and we're heading to the top of the fourth inning.
Here we are, top of the fourth inning. Juggernauts up 3 0. Again, we're playing five inning games. And leading off for the Whippets is Nick Martinez. Sarno back on the mound. He came in, Tim, around the third inning, I believe. Yeah, third inning. He looks fresh. He is fresh. You know, I know he's been dealing with a some minor uh, leg issues, um, but he seems completely healthy right now at the moment. So now we're talking about whether the ball hit or not. Sarno and Martinez are chatting. Great sportsmanship has been, you know, shown all tournament, you know, to players talking about rules. Very rarely do you see any uh, arguing or whatever, so that's good to see. Oh, nice tailing uh, sidearm riser. The kid from uh, M MLW uh, was throwing that pitch too. Yeah, Kyle Schultz. Kyle Schultz, thank you. Yeah, he, uh, he had a very impressive uh, sidearm uh, tailing riser. So we got one out here, Randy coming to the plate. Martinez was down on strikes. Good take by Randy. So I think the goal, Tim, would be for the Whippets to, you know, you get base runners, whether it's singles, whether it's a walk, you know, you're looking for a couple of bloops and a blast type situation. And they've, they've been very good offensively all tournament. Pop up the Sarno, makes the play, you got two outs. They've been good offensively all tournament. I'm kind of surprised they haven't put more pressure on the juggernauts right yeah. now, but I think it speaks volumes of how well Ryan was throwing and how well Sarno was throwing in relief. Another sidearm riser, yeah, outer I, corner. I mean, you know, Red, when he went down at the championship, uh, MEW championship with the leg issue, you know, he threw the next week at NWLA a little bit, which certainly didn't help. And then he pulled out of the home run derby earlier this week because he didn't, you know, he was still feeling it. but. Just his command today has been exceptional, and he, I kind of think the little bit of the layoff of you know not having to, you know, having a little bit of a break after the full ground ball of the season off of Ryan's chest, so it's gonna be a single for Pete. Yeah, I think that layoff helped, and it was smart to pull out the home run derby too. So runner on first, Tim, with two outs. So now you got the base runner, get it, get some things going. Sometimes it's hard to have a two out rally. You know, it's you know, but here you go. You know, Whippets have no choice but to try to get another base runner, or you know, maybe a double could get a run across here. Mock could be coming up. So think about Tayton's last two innings. He had the two really good plays in the top of the, uh, I mean, the bottom of the third. Now he has a single in the top of the fourth. So three productive plays by Pete. Sandra bust him in there for strike one. So many good all-round players. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. This tournament was just stacked. I mean, top to bottom. And it's it's not a hyperbolic thing. It's It really is. These guys are so ultra-talented. And, like, uh, you know, as former players, I'm in awe of, you know, what, what most of these guys are able to do on both sides of the ball. Yeah, and everybody from MLW to Can't Touch Us, the young team from Texas, to the new school risers, uh, a little more veteran style to the Whippets who are veteran players. Like people from 15 to the mid 50s playing here in this tournament. 44 teams, 27 states, people from all over the place. Uh, very, very incredible atmosphere. Good pitch by Sarno. Uh, Mockaby fouls it straight back for a strike three. So the end of the top of the fourth, it's three nothing juggernauts. We're heading to the bottom of the fourth.
Heading to the bottom of the fourth inning, uh, Juggernaut Sarno's leading off, followed by Stant, Tim, and if anybody gets on, we have Ryan. So the Juggernauts are really trying to add to their lead at 3-0. You know, no lead is safe, especially against the Whippet, so I mean, uh, they're looking to add a run or two here to give Sarno a little less pressure in the bottom of the, of the uh, I mean, the top of the fifth inning. So here we are, semifinals of the 2021 United Whipple Bowl National Championship. The winner of this game faces the Meats, who beat the Lemonheads in the semifinals. And pretty early on in the playoffs, just to recap, we had C4 eliminated, Phenoms eliminated, Usual Suspects last year's Champs eliminated, and Black Dog Country Club eliminated. I think most people would have placed their bets on one of their, those four teams, but as we said numerous times, it's a very spread out tournament, and you know I've watched the Meats and Juggernauts play a lot over the last few years, and they're as talented with anybody, you can hit with anybody. Good pitch by Dalby there, strikes out Sarno for one out. Strikeout looking there. I mean, I, this is an absolute amazing performance by Dalby uh, pitching today. You know, holding the Juggernauts to three runs on that many innings, that many pitches. Uh, you know, keeping the whippets in the game. I think Paul and I were talking about that's his job. His job wasn't trying to throw a shutout. That was going to be very, very hard to do is to keep his team in the game. And the whippets still have a chance because their bats can explode. They have exploded numerous times throughout this tournament. Stan coming up, and for those of you that have been following the tournament, know in the quarterfinals, here's a ground ball back to Dalby. We got two outs. The last round, it was with Inc. versus Juggernauts in the quarterfinals. And... Juggernauts were one out away from being eliminated in the quarterfinals. And Stan hit a three-ball, one-strike count, hit a home run to tie up the game to send it to extra innings off of Whitener. Then in the bottom of the eighth in extra innings, hits a walk-off home run against Connor Young in the bottom of the eighth on the first pitch of the inning. So Stan, well, it was awesome how awesome display of power. The game-tying home run that was clutch and the game-winning home run, you know, just totally deflated with ink. But with Inc. was one out away from advancing to the, the semifinals. Tim up at the plate here. Two outs, nobody on. In this game, Tim has singled. And I think he has a single and a walk. But the damage was done when, uh, in the second inning, Tim had a single. And then Ryan followed it up with a two-run homer. Fouls it straight back. And then the last inning, Ryan doubled. And Sarno hit a RBI single that scored the run. Shadows are starting to creep uh, a little bit past the batter. It'll be past the batter very shortly. There's one of those vicious swings by uh, Tim and Ryan. Tim Tim does it. Ryan does it. It's crazy. So Nick, uh, which one do you think was born uh, first? Since Ooh, wins? trivia question I here. Didn't know this do you, do you know the today. answer? I do know the I'm answer. I'm just going to randomly say Ryan. No, it was uh, Tim. At a fi oh, deep fly ball by Tim. Almost over the netting and missed going over the wire by a good 10 feet. Well, what a shot to give his team a 4 nothing lead. So both Miguel Rats have home runs today. I think Tim was like, no, you're not going to be the only one that's a home run. I'm going to hit one too. Juggernauts are up 4 to nothing. Huge home run. So Tim has two hits, a single and a homer. Ryan has a home run and a double. So the Miguel Rats are both doing damage against Dalby. That was a shot, left, the left center field. And a vicious swing there by Ryan. <laughs> a hanging uh, drop pitch there. That ball was launched. And Tim, speaking of launching, launched a lot of home runs on Friday night's home run derby. He had 31, finishing second to Jordan Robles' impressive 33. Both records in a home run derby for the tournament. And think about that. You're hitting a little bit more than 30 home runs in 60 seconds. That's uh, incredible. I can't hit a home run in bat BP. <laughs> and we do have that on a video on the UF YouTube page. Ground ball to third. Here's Tayton's throw. Nice play by him. So he's, he's had a couple good plays in the last two innings. So we're heading to the top of the fifth. It is 4 nothing Juggernauts.
Leading off for the Whippets. The Whippets are down to their last three outs. Martinez, Randy, and Pete. Now let's see if the Whippets could uh, get a little rally going here. Down four nothing in the bottom of, I mean, uh, top of the fifth, and it's their last chance to extend this game. They're down four nothing, so they're still in striking distance, uh, but they haven't, you know, had that many hits today. They have Randy has a single, Pete has a single, Pete Tatum has two singles actually, so they have three hits. No walks. Um, they're pretty free swinging team. Yeah, but like Paul said earlier, they're they also with their free swinging, they make contact. They a, do a lot. So like, I mean, there's there's numerous plays that the Jugs had to make in the field. So they're always putting pressure on folks, and like it's wiffle ball is a hard enough game. Sidearm drop. It, 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 it's it, being a fielder is not easy. So the more you put the ball in play, you know, the better your chances are. You know, unlike the 1987 version of like Major League Baseball, where you know, oh, you roll, you roll deep fly ball to center. And nice catch by not. Tim. I've been laying out because why wouldn't he lay out? That's a rally killer, uh, Tim. Like you, you, you start off the inning, you think you have a hit the center field, and he dives and catches it. Nice play by Tim. He probably got some turf burn there, or track burn. One out. Dalby coming up. So I think, I mean, we're far away from this, but I think Dalby, if you had a name, um, you know, let's just say top 10 MVPs at the tournament, he's definitely within that mix, I would say. Oh, definitely. Um, I mean, he's, he's, he's been phenomenal. Yeah. Just, like, I don't know where he's – able to dig this up inside um, hard strike yeah, up and in I mean like what do you do to that pitch, you yeah know, you just say hey nice pitch and I think Sarno's feeling it now he like he sees the finals he's 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 think you know he's 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 pumped up he's ready to pitch probably whether it's him or Ryan or a mix of both they, they might do both I wouldn't be surprised so we got one out Dalby at the plate here for the whippets sidearm drop gets Dalby chasing so now the Whippets are down to their last out. The Juggernauts are one out away what? from going to the finals to face the meets. Uh, yeah, I got up in the top. Pete Tayton batting here for the Whippets. Takes the ball. So we're one out away from seeing a Jugs meets matchup, which is two teams that know each other very well, that face each other numerous times over the last three, four, five years especially the last few years at the MAW. The players know each other well. Both elite offensive teams. Strike there. There's a strike to Tayton there. Tayton's trying to do whatever he can to extend this game. Fouls it off there. So they're down to their last strike. Sarno, who came in relief in the third inning. Uh, Ryan uh, pitched eight innings of the quarterfinal game and the first two innings of this game, and Sarno came in the third, trying to close the door on the Whippets. The Whippets are down to their last strike here. Tayton battling in the box here, a couple foul balls. Sarno hits the outer part of the plate, and the Juggernauts are going to the finals of the 2021 United Wiffle Bowl National Championship, and will take on the meets. What a game by the Juggernauts. What a two game by the Juggernauts. They did not have a letdown after an incredible game against with Inc. previously. So let's recap quickly in this game. It was 0-0 through 1. In the second inning, Tim hit a single. Ryan followed up with a two-run homer to right field to make it 2-0. In the third inning, Ryan had a double, and Sarno hit an RBI single to make it 3-0. And in the fourth inning, Tim hit a solo home run to give the Juggernauts a 4-0 lead. And pitching-wise, Sarno... Um, Ryan started the game, pitched the first two innings, and then Chris Sarno came in in the third and pitched the third, fourth, and fifth. And for the Whippets, uh, Dalby pitched a complete game, after, you know, pitching a lot on Saturday and Sunday. Um, Dalby had a single. Pete Tayton had two singles, so they had, that's their three hits. And Tayton had a couple uh, sparkling plays in the field. So let's get ready. We'll be probably having the finals in a little bit. We'll take a short break. Uh, we'll have it live on YouTube again right here. Um, it's going to be the me.